Hey everyone, uh, today in this video tutorial I will be introducing a sensor that has three uh, parts embedded in the same part that's the accelerometer, magnetometer and the gyrometer and it's known as LSM9DS0. Now to gain more knowledge about that, uh, let's roll up on the website that is controlleverything.com and search for this particular sensor and let's see what we got. As you can see it's a 3D accelerometer, 3D gyroscope, 3D magnetometer and as you can see a long list of features for it and also you can purchase the sensor from here. I will be interfacing the sensor lsm 90 s 0 with a particle photon and for that I require a code. So I will be going on the resource tab and here comes the particle code sample as you can see. Now you can download the code sample as the file from here this way link. Also you can have the code from github dot com and the repository there is control everything community now let's have a look over the hardware connections we need to set up and let's proceed further now coming to the hardware setup first of all the requirement is of a particle photon which you are able to see on my screen and here comes an i2c shield this i2c shield is available on the website that is control everything dot com and now gently make a connection and press the particle photon over the i2c shield now this uh, I2C shield helps making connection with other I2C devices and rather a lot easier connection. So that's why we use it. Now the next part we require is our sensor that is lsm 9 dsu and here comes a connecting cable. Now make the connection of the cable and the sensor and make sure that uh, the brown wire of the cable should be connected to the ground terminal of the sensor and for the same reason to the I2C shield. Now the last part is to provide uh, power backup and for that we require a micro USB cable just like this and gently insert it over the power jack. As we are done with the hardware section, now what we require is to look over the code, the particle code and let's interface. Now for the interfacing of the particle code, what do we require is to have the code and for that log in to github.com and here in this github.com we have to search for the repository that is control everything community which you are able to see on my screen and here we go as you can see we this is the required sensor that is lsm 9 dsu and there you go and this is the particle code we would like to explore further but before that let's have a look over the instructions we need to pursue to follow as you can see we have to log into a particle photon and set up the device according to the steps provided on this very link Let's open up this link as you can see uh, all the relevant information how to get started how to connect the photon is here using the operating system and different methods. Similarly after that uh, we have to download or get pull the code and on the online ID we have to copy this entire code and build.particle.build is the online ID where we have to paste the entire code we have to create new file here and then save it as you can see right here just like that. At the very end, we have to verify and flash the code on the particle photon and the code output will be shown in the form of logs at the dashboard and dashboard.particle user logs is there for the output to be printed on the monitor as you can see, just like here. Uh, now get back to the code so that we can explain it in a better way. As you can see, it's a .im extension file. Now in the code we have included uh, some of the header files as you can see application.h and spark wiring i2c.h. We have three sensor that's the uh, gyrometer, accelerometer and magnetometer and for that we have defined the address of the gyrometer that is 0x6a and we have the accelerometer address that is uh, 0x1e as you can see. We have initialized some of the variables here and also we have set variables some here. Now in the void setup function we have initialized i2c communication as master and initialized serial communication with the baud rate equal to 9600. Now coming to the writing part where we are sending commands to the sensor and here we go as you can see we have to select the control register 1 and it's 0x20 and the sending data is for the command that is data rate 95 hertz x y z axis enabled and power on mode is there and it goes for 0x 0f after that we are selecting the control list of 4 having address 0x 23 and the command we are sending here is for the full scale range that is 2000 dps and continuous update mode and it's 0x 30 then we have to select the control list of 1 having address 0x 20 and the command we are sending here is for the acceleration data rate 
that is 100 hertz xyz axis enabled and power on mode is there and it's wire dot uh, right as you can see 0x 67 is the command then we have to select the control list 2 having address 0x21 and here we are sending the command for full scale selection range that is plus minus 16g that goes for 0x20 then we have the control list of 5 selection and it is 0x24 and the command here we are sending is for magnetic high resolution output data rate equal to 50 hertz and at 0x70 then we are selecting the control list of 6 having address 0x25 and the command here we are sending is for the magnetic full scale range that is plus minus 12 hertz and it goes for 0x60 the last one in the writing section is there for the selection of control list of 7 having address 0x26 and we are here sending the command for the normal mode and magnetic continuous conversion mode as you can see it's 0x00 as we are done with the writing command now what we require is to read the data back from the sensor and for that we have the void loop and here we have the for loop function which uh, goes for 6 times and we have selection of the data register that is 40 plus i as you can see we are requesting uh, 6 bytes and reading 6 bytes of gyroscopic data of rotation for x, y and z axis. Then here the conversion of the data takes place which is according to the data sheet provided for the sensor that is LSM 9DS0. Then again we have a for loop function which uh, runs for 6 times and here we are selecting the data register that is 40 plus i as you can see. We are requesting and reading 6 bytes of acceleration data for 3 perpendicular axis x, y and z. Then we have the conversion of the acceleration data takes place according to the data sheet. Uh, details provided there. And now the last part in the uh, reading section is to select the data register that is 8 plus i as you can see we are requesting and reading 6 bytes of magnetic field data that is for the 3 perpendicular axis x, y and z then we have the conversion of the data takes place after this part we want to print the data on the output output data on the screen and for that we have the output data to be displayed on the dashboard and we have the particle dot publish as you can see we have the x y z axis of rotation acceleration in x y and z axis and at last we have the magnetic field in x y and z axis we are printing the data on the dashboard and you will get the output there now what do we require is to look over the practicality of this code and let's move forward now for the working environment the first step is to copy this entire code of the particle as you can see on my screen copy it and now open up the building we have discussed earlier and here we have to create a new file and here we have to paste the entire code as you can see on my screen and name it 9ds0 for the reference and then save it and now verify and compile the code after that we have to flash the code while flashing the code we have to check for the magenta flash which confirms that code is good to go and we can have our output data on the dashboard screen so just now we have the magenta flash and the successful notification of the flash is at the bottom of the code now what do we require is to open up the dashboard user logs and from where we can have our output data on the screen so as you can see we have the x, y and z axis of rotation along with the acceleration and magnetic field in 3 perpendicular axis that's x, y and z. Also you can notice the values are almost constant but when I try to rotate the sensor you can notice the change in the values regarding the rotation and the acceleration for x, y and z axis. So you can see the changes there. Uh, now when I put a bar magnet over the sensor you can notice the change in the magnetic field x y and z axis yeah there you go so this is how the sensor responds for the accelerometer gyrometer and magnetometer now let's have a look over the applications and the benefits for the sensor that's the lsm 90 s0 let's have it the lsm 90 s0 is a system in package featuring a 3D digital linear acceleration sensor, a 3D digital angularity rate sensor and a 3D digital magnetic sensor. The LSM 9DS0 has a linear acceleration full scale of plus minus 16G till plus minus 16G, a magnetic full scale range till plus minus 12 Gauss and an angular rate of plus minus 2000 degrees per second. 
The LSM 90S0 include an I2C serial bus interface supporting standard and fast mode and an SPI a serial standard interface. Due to these features, the sensor LSM 90S0 is, is useful in applications like indoor navigation, smart user interfaces, gaming and virtual reality input devices and display map orientation. As you can see, this sensor is available on the website controleverything.com and you can purchase the sensor from here. You can also have the code from the resource tab and after that you can download the code as a zip file. You can also have the code from github.com and the repository there is control everything community. In the end, I would make it clear that for any further queries, you can reach us on controleverything.com and you can post your comments on the community page. For articles and blogs which are relevant to this video and the sensor, you can go to instructables.com and to subscribe more video tutorials like this, you can have a look over and subscribe our YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed this video and had a good one yourself. Thanks a lot.